So um, the game that I wanted to show, uh, share with you tonight is um, is kind of special for me personally and for I think for uh, all of the Go Magic project because um, it's one of the games that got me interested in Huang Shui and it's one of the content creators who actually inspired Go Magic itself. And I'm talking. I've 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 mentioned this before on uh, live streams. Uh, there there used to be. Um, uh, a commentator and reviewer uh, online. His name was Go Commentary, and uh, he used to have a website. But then he moved uh, out of Go, and now he's doing something uh, something else. And you can actually find all of his videos uh, available for free on YouTube right now. So if you search for Go Commentary, you will uh, you will find the videos. And uh, so this this Chinese guy uh, under the name of Go Commentary, he did a lot of um, uh, he he explained some trick plays. Uh, he showed some famous games, and as part of the famous game series, he showed uh, a game of Huanlong Shi. And this game impressed us so much, and the style of his uh, of his commenting was just so, uh, just it was just so clear and transparent and easy to follow. Even though he had an accent, but uh, that we were actually inspired to try and do something in a similar. In a similar vein, and and Go Magic is very much following in the footsteps of that, and I'm gonna review the exact same game as he did, uh, and we saw this game many 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 years ago, and uh, uh, but today we have AI, and so we can take another look at that game. I won't cover all of the variations that he did, so if you're curious to to know more about this game, you can always go back uh, to to YouTube, search for Go Commentary, find uh, this game of Hollow Shi. And uh, uh, see some other uh, uh, variations there in that game. So let's take a look. So in this game, uh, uh, Huangxi is playing. Huangxi is playing white, and uh, Jiang Tianyuan is playing black. Uh, like I explained before, uh, Huangxi hardly ever really had to fight um, severely in his games. Because most of the people he had to play against were not even matches, so um, there were a couple of people. There was Zhou Donghou, and they they played like uh, like forty games, and uh, some of those games were challenging for Huang Longxi. And of course, there was this uh, the famous um, a, a series of Blood and Tears, the ten uh, the match of ten games of Blood and Tears. That was incredibly was it was a lifelong. Lifelong masterpieces for uh, for both for Huang Shi and for Xu Xingyou, his opponent. But uh, I was thinking about reviewing one more game of Blood and Tears, but those games were so intricate that it would take me probably at least a day, maybe maybe two days, to get another review in place. So instead of that, uh, I followed down the um, easier path, and I, I, I I'm going to show you this. So as as always in those times, the game would start with this diagonal opening. Uh, the black and white stones are already in place, so there was no other corner move for them but the star point. Every game would start with this uh, diagonal star point position. Now, just give me a minute here. Okay. Now, um, let's take a look. So as always, we're not focusing very much on on the opening, uh, because the openings are were not so important at that, at, at those times. They would just uh, make extensions everywhere, invade everywhere, and then the fight would begin right afterwards. So let's take a look. Immediate splitting to the side. Huang Shi invades. Black does the same thing, and this is uh, I call this the. The famous influence game, because in this game, Huang Shi is all about building influence. I mean, he was really famous for uh, playing for thickness and using his uh, his thickness very well. But in this game, he went out of his way to build a a tremendously strong thickness, and it's just so surprising how he did that. Because consider this: uh, the the two white stones, and Huang Shi is playing white. They are they occupy those diagonal positions in the corners, so it's a lot easier. You know, when, when for example, when I was younger uh, and Sun Ren Sei was really popular, those three star um, 
three star points in a row. It was really popular and really common. And just consider how much easier it is to play for thickness, for Moyo, for influence, when you have uh, all of your stones on one side. But and now think about how, how much more difficult it is, how much more challenging it is for Huan Shi because his stones are in, in opposite corners. So how how can you play for a Moyo when, when your stones are positioned like this? And yet, white jumps. Uh, this corner enclosure, the only one that was played at that time. And uh, rumor has it that uh, because at that time they had this uh, extra, the, the group tax rule, and uh, the more groups you have on the board at the end of the game, um, you, the more tax you would have to pay. So uh, once the group tax rules are, imply, are applied, they say that Katago, uh, the modern AI, also starts showing that this move becomes a lot more um, satisfactory, a lot more appealing, this kind of uh, large knight's move. But with our modern rules, uh, this, this move is not so common. And instead of any invasion, white, of course, white could have uh, could have played something like this, and you uh, we've seen this in one of the games in the course, an invasion, and white could easily live in the corner by connecting to. Oh wait, I have. Okay, by doing something like this, for example, white could easily connect, right? Or um, or white could connect to. To this stone as well that was easy but in this game uh in this particular game huang Shi is going for uh, only for the influence so he's uh reducing black from the outside he's giving up the points so this and push and here i have the first question um so right now black needs to add another stone obviously black can't just standard key Black needs to add a stone to somehow complete the shape, to fix, settle the shape. So how would you finish the shape if you are black right now? What's the move? A, B, C, or D? Mike, is it on? Cool. It's actually confusing here because uh, uh, in the game there was uh, one move was played and uh, a different move is actually the best. So think carefully. Uh, Zhang Tianyuan, uh, Huang Chi's opponent, did not make the best move, um, surprisingly. And also maybe not really surprising because at, the, at that time they favored uh, certain shapes, like for example the large knight's move. And also this move that you're about to see was also uh, kind of a local favorite at that time. So do we have a result? Oh, wow. That's a wonderful vote of one person uh, voting for A. Uh, what, a, what, a, what, a what a result. And, and someone also uh, mentioned B in the chat. Well, um, uh, actually, I've I've added some of the options just to confuse you guys because, um, well, for example, A that you mentioned, if uh, if black plays here, well, if white responds to this, first of all, that's already making white stronger. But white doesn't even have to. Res uh, uh, Paul didn't show up, they say. Hmm. But someone voted, right? Someone voted. Uh, there was one vote at A. Mike, was it you? No? Well, anyway, uh, maybe we could set it up the, the old-fashioned way. Um, let's make this official right now. A test vote. OK. Um, OK, test. A test vote. Uh, uh, Hong Shih or, or Xu Xinyou? Who is, who is better? Uh, I see it. Yeah, I see it. Guys, can you see the vote? Can you see it in the chat? Does it pop up? 
Yes? No. Uh, okay. Lion guy sign says no. Yes? No? Yes? It's confusing. Yeah, I saw it this time. Okay. Okay. Hmm, maybe I'm the odd one. <laughs> I don't know. Lion guy sign just, uh, well, uh, it's going to be more, so um, keep your eyes open and uh, hopefully it will show up. Sorry about that. So anyway, if, uh, if, if if black kicks like this, which seems to be like a nice move, but uh, white doesn't even have to respond. White can Hane here, and you know this is this is dangerous. Now the two black stones can, like if you do this, white can descend. This looks a bit dangerous here for for black. Um, now this move, also this exchange, of course white will respond, and it only makes white stronger. White g gets thicker. So uh, bumping into your opponent's stones is typically not not the best idea, uh, if, if you can avoid that, because uh, once uh, once you become stronger, like l let's say um, the correct move, uh, the correct move is actually the correct shape in this sort of situation is is playing here, uh, which probably is not very surprising. We just bump like this; it makes the shape stronger. Now there's no cut, uh, no aji at all. And if, for example, white doesn't do anything, or white plays this, then their favorite move. And now black is not going to bump like this. Black is going to Hane, right? Black is going to black and Hane, and this is a lot more aggressive. Vadim, D is a typical SDK mistake. Uh, D, oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Well, happy look. Remember, I asked you a question about the typical mistakes. Uh, this is one of them. I need more. But yeah, probably, yeah. Bumping into the stone uh, might feel powerful, but at the same time, yeah. If you bump like this, it makes your opponent stronger and your weakness is still there. Like black still needs to go back and fix it. So you still need to play here or here. And if you have to go back anyway, then why, why bump in the first place? You don't want to do that. But in the game, uh, and this is the shape that they liked, uh, at that time, black played here. This is the game. This is the game move, and it doesn't really make sense because, I mean, I would understand if black played something like this, which doesn't really work. But I mean, at least covering the corner. But this move, it it still doesn't really protect against something like this. And well, there's no there's no. It, it's just minus one point. It seems so. But again, it, it's, it still defends against the cut. So it, we can't say that this is a, a, a terrible mistake. Just a, a, a strange looking shape move from, from the past. Now, uh, obviously this is, the, this is not something that will be included in the basic Joseki course because uh, this is a very, very unusual shape. Of course, it could have been um, actually if you if you want to make like a honte move, honte is a Japanese term for like an honest, calm and like peaceful move, but that's important to fix a shape. Actually, before playing anything like this, white w really wants to fix this shape. Remember, uh, if black didn't bump, now white really wants to fix uh, this weakness here. There's a weakness, and if white doesn't do anything, for example, if white does this, black will hane. And this uh, white stone on the right will get uh, will get in trouble. If white doesn't want this to happen, then white probably needs to play something like this right now. I I know it looks very slow, but this is probably the proper move to play. And yet Hwangchu didn't play this because um, he's playing for influence, and probably he knows that his opponent is not uh, the toughest challenge, so he allows himself some slack some um, maybe less powerful and less uh, sh like strong le less than optimal moves at some at some points so he covers like this and at this point when black jumps now this move is not so interesting anymore look because now white fixes the shape but black can still run like this and later later Black will have something like this. So black, white shape feels a little bit awkward here. 
So at this point, actually, it would make sense for y to jump like this and defend this shape. Again, now this is the proper move right now. The proper move just changed uh, depending on the surroundings. And white went uh, chose yet another option. I, another pressy move, again, white is aiming for the influence. No points. Points don't matter. Just give the points to black. And if black now connects, which is the plan, if black does this, which is such a tempting move to play. Uh, now white would play... Can you see where white would play, actually? I, I, I didn't put this as a vote, but let's, uh, let, me, uh, let me show you some options. Let's say A, B, C, or D. Considering for modern Go theory, this game is so strange, even before AI era. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it doesn't matter AI or no AI. Um, this, yay. Whoa, whoa. Uh, int intricate, intricate just followed and uh, Turnamja, Korean name. Welcome, welcome to Go Magic. Uh, yes, happy look. I agree. This this is a very very strange, um, very strange looking game. But uh, most of those games are strange looking. And yes, C is the correct move. C is the move that Huan Shi probably would have played if the game had been like this. Wait, off the top, uh, you can skip the question and take after the game. What do you think about the following idea for you to create some blockchain with some crypto go currency or tokens? It might help to raise additional funds and to give fun and magic forever to everyone. Uh, well, that's a, that's a big question. We'll think about it after the, after the stream, like you said. Thank you. And, uh, Turnamja is a big name, a ghost streamer on Twitch. Oh, okay. It's like last time, uh, Lion Guys, I remember when you came to my stream and you said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also a ghost streamer. And I said, oh, I, I, I've never heard of you. And now, of course, I've, I've watched your streams and now <laughs> you're introducing more, uh, oh, 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 I see. Oh. We were raided. We were raided and I didn't even see it. Yeah, my chat is too small. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Turnamja. Thank you. Uh, thank you for raiding us. And uh, yes, I, I will definitely check, uh, uh, check it out. Because I'm, I'm also, I'm, I'm always curious to see some, some new uh, cool streamers. That's not true, Hyung. You're too modest. All right. Let me make it. A little bit bigger. Okay, so yeah, you're you're all right. Uh, you're absolutely correct, and uh, this would have been the move. In indeed, White would play this uh, wonderful double double knight move, and uh, this looks perfect for White, and probably because it looks so perfect for White, didn't Black didn't like this. Black didn't want to follow this, and uh, Black wanted to resist. And black played here. Now what follows here is uh, a complicated scenario. White's shape is not really perfect here after this Hane. White does this and oh my goodness, I would never even think about a move like this one. But again, this is a, this is a matter of strength because uh, Hong Shi is clearly uh, so much ahead of everyone else. Uh, so I would consider White stones, if I'm white here, I would think that the white stones are too weak here. So I would I would be thinking only about defending, playing something like this. Obviously, just trying to keep the corner and uh, and think about going back to attacking black in the future. But of course, now black could do this and uh, capture the stone. But uh, after this, it all becomes a lot more complicated. What Go game is this? Uh, this is another game played by Huan Longshi. Uh, Huang Longxi is playing white against uh, Zhang Tianyuan uh, as, as black. Another uh, wonderful example of uh, Huang Longxi's uh, playing style. And this is a game that demonstrates his uh, superior use of influence. And you will see that very, very soon. So a fight, a fight ensues here. And another crazy cut from Huang Longxi. 
And at any point here, the computer is showing that this point, this marked point is the key point for black. Black should play there like pretty much instead of any moves here. Like uh, every move, black should just play there. Black should play there and um, I mean, for example, here, black plays like this. White has to extend down if white wants to keep black separated. Now, something like that. This is uh, this makes sense. White blocks. There's a ladder. Oh, well, white can capture black in a ladder. So black extends. Now white has to connect. And then this, you see, white shape is really problematic here. White cuts. This is sente. Now this. White probably needs to capture, right? So white probably needs to do something like this. Uh, and then this is Sente as well. And after this, black can even go back to maybe connect like this. And so white gets the territory, but black gets so much stronger on the outside and connects the stones. The game looks much better for black right now. Uh, I mean, much better than before, because this is a no Komi game. Huang is playing white, so Huang Shi actually has the advantage from the start. But this this sequence would probably bring the game a lot a lot closer. In a no Komi game, uh, this sequence would mean that uh, the Komi uh, the Komi advantage would be gone. But this didn't happen. This uh, descending move from Black happened a lot uh, several moves later. So right here, Black connects. Again, white is going only for the influence. Influence and the move. Cut. And again, white is really happy to give up the corner. White could have had this corner. White could have taken this, but white didn't want to. Why don't she just wants to sacrifice this corner? Just like this. Black takes it. And now look at this. Black has all of the points on the right. Now black also has the corner. And after this, black will also live at the bottom. This is just making himself thicker. And black plays here. So at this point, black realizes that white has a superior wall in the center. And this wall has to be TB Tibro high. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this wall has to be somehow uh, reduced, and even though white doesn't have any points at this point, but you have to be very careful because this is the most magical or one of the most magical parts of, uh, of a Go game when influence just comes to life. When uh, with influence, it seems like white doesn't have any points at all, and then the points would just appear seemingly out of nowhere. That's what... Uh, that's what it really looks like uh, when when the, it, it it really feels like magic. So uh, right now, white doesn't have almost anything, and black has all of the points. Um, G seventeen seems better than H seventeen. Uh, yeah, I, I was I was just about to say that that uh, at, at this point, if white is so strong, if white has so much influence and thickness, then you really have to be uh, careful and moderate. You don't want to play uh, something crazy like this. So, for example, playing something like this would feel insane because you're playing so close to white's uh, wall. Of course, white is going to invade. And now this black stone is going to be in trouble. So you don't want to do this. In, in view of this, that, black is, uh, that white is so thick, you might want to consider playing something like that. Yeah, exactly, G17. She said uh, a G17 is f feels a lot better and safer than the move in the game. But probably John Tenyuan didn't really see what was coming. <laughs> because you see, he thinks that, oh yeah, I'm reducing, I'm, I, I, I'm reducing this, this wall. He doesn't see that this wall has so much potential. Even though actually computer suggests that white can invade here right away. But we'll get to this invasion in a second. First, white builds more thickness at the bottom, attaches, and his wall becomes even thicker. Uh, with Moyo, maybe G7, G16. Well, yeah, uh, anything, G16, G17, but 
anything but a little bit closer not to allow a simple invasion. Because right now, an invasion is clearly possible. So, and actually at this point, again, the computer thinks that, well, as much as white would want to disconnect the corner and the, the bottom group, but this is not the biggest more, uh, this is not the biggest point. So white really wants to tenuki this and play either on the left side or invade here. But Honshi is really patient here. He responds once and twice and allows black to play here. And at this point, it really feels like black got everything he wanted. It's just, uh, it's such a, such a, a misleading position because I, I, every time I see this, every time I get to this point in the game, I'm thinking there's no way that white can win this game because black has all of the points, right? Black has territory in three places on the right, upper right corner and the bottom. And black also has the three stones on the left, which are all in the right places. Just like go commentary said, they're all reducing white's moyo very efficiently. And yet, all of this doesn't really help. And actually, at this point, the computer's, the computer's estimate is that white is ahead by, it's like 90% win rate, and white is ahead by about five points. So even though white has no points, but white is ahead by about five. How crazy is this? Well, I'll take white here. I like white's position. Well, I mean, as much as I love playing for influence, or at least I loved playing for influence, but this, I don't know. I mean, I, I also really like White's Moyo here, but having no territory at all, are you sure? Are you sure you would uh, you would want to take you would want to take White here? I, I mean, actually, if if Black had a stone at G seven at G seventeen, I would probably take Black. <laughs> I would I would be a coward, and uh, I would I would take Black here. Anyway, uh, at this point, uh, before invading, before doing anything on the left, white tries to get himself even stronger, even stronger. Thank you. And uh, this maneuver, however beautiful, um, the computer kind of disproves it. So let's see. Here's the idea. Black cuts. Now this. Atari, white connects. Now, black needs to do something about these two pesky two stones in, inside black's territory. Otherwise, you know, black can actually even die there. So black attaches. This is all correct. And now this next move, black could simply just play like this. Block the stones. And even though white can Atari, black connects. Okay, fine. Yeah, black's shape is uh, pretty bad. But uh, black is still going to kill white easily. Next move is Atari. But in the game... Black plays here, and this allows uh, to fulfill um, every dream that Huangxi had. Now Huangxi gets to play uh, an extra move on the outside in Sente. So look, white captures. Now black needs to capture, descend, this, and now this move becomes Sente. If, uh, if black doesn't respond, then um, white, will, white will capture the group. So black needs to Atari. And then next move, the capture will still be Sente as well. So white can capture the stone anytime in Sente, which means that white's wall is flawless. It is perfect, absolutely perfect. Finally, after all these preparations, white invades. And uh, it's going to be difficult for black here. Black still has that weakness on the top. And this lonely stone... He will have to live on its own, separated. One of the points I like white, for example, Hoshi D16 is now nowadays called 15 point move as Sun Sun is inevitable, which is fun, but kind of true. Um, Hoshi D16. Well, yeah, D16 is, uh, but if, if, again, if black had known all of this, black could have played even not G17, uh, but black could have played F17, right? And with an F-17 support, this, uh, uh, this, this wouldn't be so invadable anymore. It would be a lot more difficult for white to reduce and invade. Uh, black was just not, probably at that time, the theory was not as developed because at that time, uh, Sun Sun invasions were really not popular. So uh, Jiang Tianyuan, uh, Hongxi's opponent, probably didn't know 
all the intricacies of Sun Sun invasion variations. So he wasn't he wasn't confident about all this. So right now Black needs to live here and a second line move from uh, from Holongshi. And uh, actually the computer typically I I've noticed that it tends to dislike this sort of uh, second line uh, attacking maneuvers, even though it seems just so cool and awesome and i would love to play here myself if i'm white here and yet the computer believes that well this black is not going to die anyway so why even try why make those second line moves so a computer thinks that yeah it's it's just time to start invading right away but anyway um black responds and another invasion and again <laughs> surprisingly uh, i've i've seen this to suji many times and yet the computer believes that um if Black just connects like this. How can white continue? Is white going to connect like this on the second line? Well, black is strong. Black is not going to die. I mean, I'm not so confident about this. AI is. The computer is confident. I'm not. I'm not confident that I, I'm going to live here very easily as black. And yet, even here, even here, um, wait, where was my variation that I wanted to show you? Oh, was here. So before before all of this madness started, before white even invaded, the computer has always suggested an invasion. And I, I just wanted to ask you a quick question here. So if, suppose white had invaded here, uh, and black has a couple of options of how to respond to this. Of course, black could, um, for example, do like this, uh, cover it like this, trying to hold it inside. But this is pretty easy. Because in this case, white can just jump into the corner, and there you go. Black has to block. We do this. Now this is sente, uh, something like this, and and this is the variation that could be expected. White just gets all the territory um, on the left. C one for black. C oh C fourteen. C fourteen for black. You mean at which point? Here, right now, um, C14, hmm, well, actually C14 here looks a little bit uh, for F17. Oh, wait, for F17. Oh, you mean like right now? Uh, wait, C14 now, like this? Whoa. <laughs> Well, I mean, this leaves uh, a, a lot of a lot of options for white, so white will just take the corner. Uh, no pressure, no pressure at all. And this this uh, this stone is not going to die here. I mean, this this white stone instead of G sixteen. Oh, instead of G sixteen. Oh, like this. Okay, but in this case, if you don't cover, then white will escape, and now the black stone is uh, in. in I mean, black is will play like this, but now this is a lot. This is a lot of pressure. This stone can later escape, and uh, black will be separated. The black group on the top, separated. Too much trouble. I'm I'm afraid this is too much trouble for black here. So I I wouldn't. This this seems very risky, unnecessarily risky. So probably. Uh, this is a very very dangerous option. This is a uh, kind of safe, but the safest option of them all is probably the one that I'm I haven't even shown yet. It's it's this one, and uh, I have one more question here. As always, four options again. Um, if you are white, after this move, how would you continue? A, B, C, or D? Would you jump into the corner in, right away? Would you just extend at B? Would you play a crazy wedging move at C? Or would you Hane at D? Which one is the best? What do you think? Um, actually, at this point, there's only one move which is correct, uh, which is um, it's just theoretically the best here. And I will show you why in, in a few seconds. Not D. <laughs> OK, maybe. A. Um, yeah, sure, sure. Vote, vote. A few more seconds. Yeah. 
there is a, a sort of theory behind this. Uh, I mean, this is the move that you've probably seen so many times before. This covering, uh, this covering move, and okay, we got we got a we got a fifty fifty here. Um, a and C. All right, so let's let's go over the losing variations for first, the ones that you guys haven't chosen, and I'm 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 happy that you haven't. So first of all, D. Someone said not D, and you're right. Of course, D is the worst. Uh, you never ever play D because of course black will cut, and there's nothing white can do after this. There's no follow up. Uh, you, you can't do this because after this, black just covers very well and white is in trouble here. Maybe white will live, but black is, is getting so much thicker in the process. So you don't want to do this. Um, well, B, again, is making, making your opponent unnecessarily stronger. Of course, black is going to connect, no question about it. But remember, we're trying to make it in invasions and then potentially attack black, somehow separate and attack. And if we only take the points, but we make black stronger in the process, then this is not, definitely not the best option. So if, if you want to live like this, you know, doing something like this, then this uh, looks like you're only getting a few points, and but the price you have to pay for that is too high. So no, no, no. And uh, what was another one? A, someone voted for A. Uh, a is not too bad, actually. But again, uh, black would uh, play this. And now this, uh, um, this, this stone gets covered and left alone there. Possible. Definitely possible. But the best move in this sort of situation, and the best move, the first thing you should actually consider when you get covered like this is whether or not you can play here, the wedge. And there is one, okay, there are two conditions. Uh, under which you can play this wedge. And the conditions are, you, you have to check two letters. The letter going to the left and the letter going to the right. And if both letters work, then this is always your best move. If one of the letters doesn't work, then yeah, you can think about jumping into the corner at A or doing something else. So uh, let me show you the letters that I mean. Uh, if black ch chooses to Atari like this aggressively, trying to just split white and, uh, and and kill something. White extends, and now black has two options. Black can connect, and here's letter number one. White captures easily, and this is good for white. Black will have to connect like this on painfully on the second line, and white becomes even stronger. Letter number two, black can capture this stone instead, and in this case, white will Atari, and maybe even one more time. And now this is the second letter. And in this case, as you can see, both letters work for white. Of course, I mean, white has so much influence. How could they not work for white? So white clearly has every letter in this world. So yeah, and if white has those letters, this is what white should have done if white had invaded, and which white didn't, I think. But this is the, this is the best option. So yeah, the option you suggested at A is not bad. This is not bad. But if ladders work, the wedge is even better. But in the game, uh, as you remember, white invaded here. Now, the, the, the problem with this sort of invasion is, well, first of all, as I, as I showed you before, black didn't have to uh, go for this variation. Black could have just connected everything and allowed white to connect along the second line. And also here, well, uh, black is too much worried about having everything connected. Because black can simply play here. And uh, what what is white going to do? Just, uh, you know, this? Fine, fine. Just let white take anything here. And if black can get all of the territory on the left, and uh, this will very effectively reduce all of that strength that white has in the center, this this would be maybe enough for black to win this. I mean, this this could be a chance. But instead of this, Black wanted to keep everything connected, save every stone on the board, which is not a good idea. Because now there's a, a, a wonderful Tsuji that um, you can remember in this sort of situation. White can cut. And now this is Sente. This is Sente. And also there's, an, there's going to be another Atari. And Black will get reduced to a tiny little territory right there. And White gets, yeah, you got it, more influence as always. Another 
strange shape move from from black. Uh, probably could have been something something uh, something else, but I mean it's really hard to because of this h17 mistake. It's really hard to spend one move in the corner and defend against every possible invasion. So this move doesn't really defend. This move doesn't defend. So it's it's hard. This move so there's still Aji. So there's nothing Black can do to uh, defend. So maybe out of the out of the out of the many bad options that uh, that, that Black had, uh, that's fine. Black is winning. Well, uh, according to according to uh, uh, my estimate, at least according to the computer estimate, um, black is not winning. Black is uh, actually black is never winning in this game. It's just that the computer thinks that white Hwanoshi could have chosen a lot of a lot of easier variations to finish this game, but he's always choosing this thickness influence based style, and that. And that's why pretty much uh, throughout the entire game, um, the, the the balance is pretty close, and uh, it's always uh, it's it's always around like white is winning by five points, white is winning by six points. Uh, it's always, but the percentage is always good. It's around ninety percent for for white all the time. It's getting actually closer. It, it will get closer uh, at the end of the game. So Sante here, defending the corner. You see this. This territory of white just appears out of nowhere because white is attacking and those walls start to naturally ooze territory. This this influence is kind of just uh, it's leaking into territory. Covering. Forcing black to live there. And after black does, more Tsuji time. Uh, there's actually the, this next Tsuji. It was suggested by the computer a long, long time ago in this game, and it it was just there all the time. And now it's it's it, it's finally time for um, uh, for for Huangshi to 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 play at the bottom. And so, where is it's not it, it's a tisu, it's essentially a probing Tsuji. It's not that something is going to die at the bottom. Everything is um, safe. But, um, black, uh, but, but white can make a probing move that will uh, get some extra benefit, get some extra profit for white. So where would you play? A, B, or C. Every move looks like a Tsuji, I think, but there's only one which, uh, which Huangxi played and which cons the, the, the computer thinks to be the best. This next move, um, I probably, uh, this is not the start of Tsuji that I would ever be able to find. Everyone says A, and my trick, my trick worked, because uh, we've seen this move before in live streams, I think, and this is also something that you've probably seen before, this sort of attachment. And so I put it here just to confuse you, and it worked. Yeah, but, but uh, actually, after this move, Black can just cover like this. The stone is captured, and the best thing that white can do here is maybe play the, maybe play here, and that's about it. But black doesn't does black even have to respond to this? Let's say black doesn't. Let's say black plays here. Can white do anything here? This Atari. Um, this is Sente, right? Well, black can just ignore, and then just give up the two stones, right? So boom. Black can give up the two stones in exchange for Sente somewhere else. So that's, that's a pretty good deal. But um, uh, the best move here, this move doesn't really achieve anything as well. But the best move is playing here. <laughs> this is a really tricky move because um, Black now has to be very careful how, how to respond to this. And but it doesn't. It seems like it doesn't matter how Black responds. White will get something. So, for example, uh, the best move here, the best, 
uh, 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 maybe the best response for Black was uh, playing this. And in this case, the best White could get here is probably get this descending move in Sente. This is Sente, so Black would would have to, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe respond like this or somehow defend. But uh, that's about it. In the game, in the game, Black played here, but we'll get to that in a second. If if Black tries to block, for example, then White can Hane. And how to respond to this? If you if you do this, then this cut is Sente. It's threatening to cut off the, the three stones. If you connect like this, then... Or what can you do? I can probably connect this like this, Sente, this, and the two stones are captured. This is a great, great result for, for white here. This move, if you honey like this, white can cut. And it's it's tricky how to respond to this. If if you take the stone, then maybe like this. You take, connect. Something gets caught. Something gets uh something gets captured here. So in the game, black descended. White escapes and cuts off. And white gets the two stones, just like we showed before, but white gets them in Sente. So white cat uh, white captures them and white doesn't have to respond right now. White can white can tenuki and play at the bottom uh play at the bottom. So this whole sequence is um uh White is still, the game is quite close, but it never drops below this uh, this middle middle line. It's always in White's favor. Well, uh, also a huge thanks to no Komi. If there was Komi in this game, uh, Holon Shi probably would have to play some 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 other way because he would have to realize that uh, this extra six and a half or six uh, uh, seven and a half points are making the game. A lot more challenging for him. An invasion, reducing everything, and uh, this. Um, Holonshi actually tried a few tricky variations here, but the computer believes that this is already so good for White that White doesn't need to 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 try any tricky variations in the corner. White can simply take this very big point, just take more. To take more cash, and it's already more than enough for white. White is winning by about like eight or nine points. Uh, it's almost 100% win rate. Easy game for white from now on. But this this move to me looks more like an intimidation tactic, because it's very even even if it doesn't work. But black, it's very scary to respond to this because one wrong move here and and, and something can collapse here. So for example. Black captures the stone. This is Sente. Now this jump. And you see white is clearly not alive in the corner, but black only has, still has one eye. And, you know, one mistake here. This is now Sente. One mistake here, and something could just die accidentally. If, for example, this corner turns into a Seki, well, that would be a disaster. Game over right away. So black has to be careful. After this here, more end game. Again, white is still not playing the C18 stone. And uh, all of these points were less important than the C18. Um, taking points in, in, in the center, we've said it before in some other courses, this is what, uh, it always looks more tempting to, um, instead of playing on the second line in, in, in the end game, it's more tempting to, to, to play in the center. And yet, uh, if in the opening, playing uh, on the second line is almost always bad, but in the end game, it's actually the other way around. It's uh, almost always better to take some second line sneaky territorial moves rather than playing something like this. The computer believes that still playing here is much bigger, much bigger than, than this. And yet, after a few more moves, again, this this is still um, this is not optimal, and the game is getting closer and closer, but never close enough, and the game ends in a few moves here.
I'm just quickly I'm just quickly going through the rest. And here it is. So the game is very close now. Uh, I think Huang Shape wins this game by only a couple of points, but uh, a surprising use of influence. His territory, all of White's territory, just um, made out of nowhere. He didn't have any points, and then and Black seemed to have so much everywhere. And probably Black just wasn't careful enough uh, with... Uh, he underestimated the, the power of this influence, and he was a little bit playing maybe a bit too casually on the top with those reduction moves. Um, somewhere there, allowing White to invade, split, and attack. Maybe that was that was a critical mistake. If if Black had been a little bit more careful and uh, more playing a bit closer, maybe this this game could have had a a, a different result. So there you have it.